Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to go over some recent additions in Nuclear Tech Mod, which is going to include the workings of the electrolysis machine, ash pit, the basics of the custom machines, some new armor pieces, and also a brand new grenade launcher along with the grenade that actually shoots bullets. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Starting with the electrolysis machine, which can be crafted using some cast steel plates, copper plates, rubber bar, fire bricks along with some steel tanks, copper coils and overclock circuit. So the crafting recipe itself isn't very expensive but this machine is pretty big. Like it takes a complete area of 11 by 5 blocks. Now it has 3 access ports on both the sides so a total of 6 ports along with crucible ports for getting out molten metal. Now it can process the normal electrolysis recipe of heavy water and normal water. Here I am going to showcase the heavy water recipe but it can also process the recipe for potassium chloride and calcium chloride and this is the only machine which can process it. So yeah the electrolysis machine is important when it comes to these two. So for now let's actually go with heavy water and it will give out deuterium and liquid oxygen. So I have all of the tanks set along with all of the pipes and as soon as the fluid identifier is in, the machine will start doing its thing. So we get deuterium and liquid oxygen but the rate at which we get it is pretty slow. So this machine can accept two upgrades which is the speed and the power saving upgrade. And by the way this machine uses a constant 200,000 HE per second. Now for now like in this update using the speed upgrade doesn't seem to bump up the energy usage i think this will be fixed in the future versions but uh, yeah and if we place the power saving upgrade in then yes that will actually affect the amount of energy consumed so for some reason the speed upgrade isn't upgrading the amount of energy used by flicking this lever now this electrolysis machine can actually process crystals into six times so basically it's six times more processing so with the crystals you will get 6 ingots of the primary output but also 2 ingots of secondary output along with a few more outputs. So yeah it's pretty effective. Now as I told you there are 3 uh, ports on both the sides. So you can place some conveyor inputs and outputs and finally some foundry channels to get the molten metal out. Let's try and process this gold crystal. So a single piece of gold crystal will give us 6 ingots of gold along with 2 ingots of lead and along with that we'll get some lithium and mercury if I remember this right. So here's all of the gold and the lead coming out and that's gonna go into this crate right here and there so we have lead and gold and along the secondary output we have mercury and lithium so this machine is actually pretty effective because the ore acidizer used to do four times ore processing this one can do six times so yeah next up we have the ash pit something that can be used along with fireboxes or ovens the crafting recipe as you can see is very cheap it's an early game machine and what it will do is collect ash from the fireboxes so for example i'm going to use two different fuels here because coal gives out a different type of ash so in one of the ovens i have placed scrap in the other one there is coal and as you can see scrap gives out ash now ash can be used in a lot of crafting recipes and uh, ash in itself can be used as a fuel actually so that's pretty good now coal gives out coal ash and what coal ash can be processed into is boron so coal ash when goes into a centrifuge will give out some tiny pile of coal along with boron and dust so yeah that's how the coal powder is going to work here all right next up we have custom machines now i'm going to dedicate an entire video to this but for now just let's take a look at the normal machine which will be added in like the default version so we have the paper press you can see the crafting recipe here and as soon as you place it down there will be a holographic structure where you will see the blocks that you need to place in order to complete this machine so once all of the blocks are placed you can actually now click on the machine and it will have an interface like this 
So the paper press will take water and sawdust and it will convert it into paper. So as soon as I have both of these items in, there's the water and the sawdust, yeah, we are gonna get paper. So you can add custom machines by editing the JSON file. And uh, yeah, there is actually instructions on the GitHub page on how you can do that. And I will try to get a video out as soon as possible. Next up, we have the lead buster grenade and the Congo Lake grenade launcher, which actually reminds me of China Lake from Black Ops. Now the Congo Lake can take in four grenades and fire them in like short intervals. So for now, let's try out the normal grenade. It goes one, two, three, and four. So that's the grenade launcher, but the more interesting part is the lead buster grenade because it doesn't really explode but it shoots out bullets for two seconds so let's get some friendly villagers here and if i shoot a grenade in the middle <laughs> yeah it will just go round and round and spit out bullets for two seconds killing everyone in a pretty decent radius actually and it will stick to any surface so if you get it like on a vertical wall it's going to spin like this now, next up, there's something which will help you out in creative, which is some satellite commands. So here I'm going to link the orbital death ray with a satellite designator. And now if I get the command, the NTM satellites orbit with the satellite in my hand, the satellite will directly be sent into orbit. So you don't need to get an HDR carrier rocket or so used to do that anymore if you're in creative. And to test this out, there the village is no more so our satellite is actually working perfectly and now if you type the command which is ntm satellites descend along with the frequency so here we have the satellite frequency 91298 so ntm satellites descend and along with that the satellite frequency then this will basically get the satellite out of the orbit so yeah finally there's the MITI environment suit, which is like a diving suit. It will really help you out for basically diving in the ocean and deep sea exploration in Minecraft. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to make a 60 deep tank and then fill it up full of water. So I can show you the difference in the diving speed. So I have switched my game mode to survival and now if I go in the water, first things first, I descend pretty slowly, I'm losing oxygen and I can barely see anything. So putting this suit on, now you will have better visibility and your descent and ascent speed, basically the entire speed that you will have in water will be pretty good. It will also give you like radiation resistance, speed and jump boost and it also helps or it negates some of the fall damage and last thing we have lanterns which are an early game i think <laughs> light source but yeah it does say that the lanterns will actually blind glyphids in a certain radius so yeah that's pretty useful i guess and there is this old variant kind of creepy <laughs> which will keep on flashing red light so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do press that like button and subscribe to the channel. Peace out guys. Stay safe.